That's a fantastic demonstration today. Fantastic that so many of you stayed here all the time to demonstrate and to give the support to Julian Assange uh, and to his family and legal team that have been battling away in the courtroom uh, in the courtroom today. Uh, Chris Harvardson, the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks, is now going to give you his uh, take on what's been happening today and then we'll be working through a few guest speakers uh, before we go and make sure that you're back here uh, tomorrow. But first of all, Kristen Harvardson. Thank you all for coming here today and stay out throughout the day. I am so heartened to see all of you here, still here after this long day. This hearing today has now come to a conclusion, to an end, but there's a continuation tomorrow. Today, Julian's lawyers were presenting the arguments against his extradition, the arguments that they, they do want a chance to present in a full appeal. And it's so amazing that you should have to go through all this to get a chance to have these arguments presented in an appeal court. It should be a given thing, but it's not a given thing. We still have to wait for the decision by these two co uh, judges here. Each and all of the arguments presented here today by Julian's lawyers would in itself suffice in a normal country to stop the extradition. There are so many arguments, I'm not going to be able to repeat all of them, but each and every point should in itself suffice to stop the extradition. The very fact that this is a country whose intelligence agency, CIA, plotted to assassinate Julian should in itself stop an extradition. If it was any other country than the United States, it would suffice. The United Kingdom would not extradite anybody to another country that, were, that had plotted to assassinate the individual, Julian Assange. And they did so and discussed it on the highest actual level of power in the White House. Can you imagine that? How can you send Julian Assange to a country which wanted him dead and openly discussed ways and means to do so? That's outrageous. That should in itself be sufficient. All the other arguments that pile on top of it to strengthen the case. The fact that there was a spying done on his legally privileged communication, tainting his possibility to have a fair trial in the United States, should in itself be enough and sufficient. The fact that he's going to be put under such condition in prison in the United States, despite any bullshit calls assurances, and excuse my friends, it's just simply that. It's BS. Assurance of, of, of what? There is only one agency in the United States can actually define and order the Bureau of Prisons to put Julian Assange into conditions which are so harsh that it could lead to his death. That is the CIA, the very agency that plotted to kill him. And do you think that they will refrain from demanding that he has been put into solitary confinement? I could keep on going about the legal arguments presented here to the two judges today. Such arguments that it would be in any normality in a civilized country absolutely impossible to come to other conclusion that at least allow him, allow him the opportunity to go through the appeal process. I have gone through so many proceedings in courthouses in this country that my hope is not big that Julian will have finally any justice in these halls of judicial power in the United Kingdom. My hope is slim. My hope is with you, that you can persuade the judges to finally listen to the argument. You tell them you are watching. Your eyes are upon them. You will be their judges. If they want to be on the right side of history, and not go down the drain. They need to listen to you. Please come back here tomorrow for day two. Please come back. Can continue to apply this pressure on the two judges because they do notice. 
the press is noticing, the message is getting across. We see growing, growing support for the cause of Julian Assange. And it's because of you who showed up here today. Please come tomorrow and thank you for showing up. Free Julian Assange, free Julian Assange now. Shame on London. On behalf of humanity, on behalf of everyone, to all of ye who have turned out today in such large numbers. I know we've met people from Italy, people who travel from Switzerland, from Sweden. We know that as we are assembled here, there's people organizing in Dublin, in Brussels for the first time in Oslo and all around the world because we represent the voices of truth, yes. the voices of freedom, and the voices of resistance. And that is why Julian Assange yes. is in that court. Yes. Now we know that what is at stake here is not the life of a man, although the life of a man is at stake. And that is incredibly important and we never lose sight of it for a minute. But more than that, it is the defense of freedom of speech, of freedom of association, a stance against the criminalization of journalism. That is what we are here. And how absolutely outrageous is it that an exemplary journalist, and we heard the evidence in the court today, a journalist whose work in exposing war crimes, renditions, torture, criminality, resulted in those awful things being changed and stopped, that he's the one in prison and the people committing that are walking the streets doing gigs for Israel or whatever the hell Tony Blair does. is here, we know that. They say if Julian is spent, sent to America, the chilling effect will silence other journalists. It has already been here for the past 12 years. So I think it is very fitting that we're here against the backdrop of the appalling atrocities and the live stream genocide in Gaza. We know that also where a civilian imprisoned population is being targeted, we also know the Ukraine war is going on without end because that's what NATO want. And I just want you to remind you of the words of Julian when he talked about the war in Afghanistan. And he said that these wars are about flushing the money from the tax bases of the US and the EU through Afghanistan and back into the bank accounts of the military industrial complex. It's not about winnable war, it's about endless war. How true he was. And therefore, that voice, that very special voice that he had is needed now more than ever because it's not just about silent the peace movement, it's about, about journalism, it is about silencing the peace movement. So let's remember also that if wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by the truth. You're all here on the side of truth, so is Julian. We'll be all here tomorrow and we will not rest until justice prevails. Now we all know that we have never been able at any point to rely on the political establishment or the court system to defend Julian Assange. This has been a work that we have had to do ourselves. This has been about people power. But every movement produces the spokespeople it deserves. And this is a good movement. And in Stella Assange, it has produced an exceptional leader. So today was 
uh, a day of legal arguments, but really what it was was an indictment of a rogue agency, the Central Intelligence Agency, which runs, it pops up in each of the arguments, whether it was Julian exposing their torture program and their involvement in illegal killings or their own plots to murder him. Throughout, this, the origin of this prosecution came about when the CIA head, Mike Pompeo, lost the plot. He lost the plot and then he instrumentalized his agents. I'm kind of sick and tired. I've been sitting all day listening to the CIA argue why you know, Assange is a criminal and uh, exposing war crimes is apparently a criminal offense. How boring and disgusting that they come into our courtrooms and tell us you know, that they want to give Julian Assange uh, a walloping. They want to prosecute him with US laws, but no protections under US laws. So you can try him with the Extradition Act, with the uh, Espionage Act, but he gets no First Amendment protections. What kind of rubbish is that? What kind of rubbish is that? You need to understand something. A lot of you are holding Palestine flags and it makes me very happy to see because these two things are not disconnected. They are connected. The same people that are prosecuting Assange are the same people bombing Gaza. You need to understand that. These are the same corporations, the same banks, the same arms dealers that put Julian Assange in jail. They're the same people that killed 130 journalists in Gaza. This is a war on journalism. And it's not just against Julian, it's against the people covering the case as well. They make it impossible to get in the courtroom. They make it impossible to hear what's going on. How the hell do they have one million pounds per missile to shoot down Yemeni drones, but they can't fix the microphones in the bloody courtroom? What the hell is that? Are you serious now? What is this? They really want us to believe they can't fund the NHS, they can't fix the transport, all of this crumbling where they got time to go make wars and kill people. Rubbish. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You need to understand something as well. This case, this is a violation of UK sovereignty. We, the Americans have no business coming here. The extradition treaty says you cannot take someone to the United States. That is what the law says. You cannot send someone to the United States for a political offense. You can't do it. And they're playing a double game here. They think that, you know, we're just gonna okay this. No, you guys coming out here, this is an act of resistance. You being here, you raising your voice, you coming out with the drums, you know, chanting, that's an act of resistance. And when Julian Assange was being taken out of the embassy, he said, resist. He said, UK resist. So he asks that of you guys. Do you understand? Julian's imprisonment is a result of people with too much power who lost the plot, who got power thirsty and are guilty they know they're guilty and they want to continue to live their, their lives without any consequences for the crimes they've committed. This case is about whether state crimes can continue unpunished, unscrutinized. Julian's freedom is the only antidote. We don't have a, a, a decision today. Julian's life is at severe risk every single day he is in prison. He is a political prisoner. He is the world's most famous political prisoner. We know what happened to the other most famous political prisoner last week. That cannot happen to Julian. It cannot be allowed to happen. The world is watching. Julian has to be freed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, whatever happens in the coming days, we can't know. But we can know that we will be there for Julian and be there for, demo for our own democracy, our own future, our own ability to change policy, to change decisions, to change governments. Because if there's no scrutiny, we can't, we can't be informed, we can't be able to change, uh, make an informed decision about who we elect. Our rights are at stake, but Julian's life is at stake. If he is extradited, he will lose his life. He will be killed. He will be killed by the country that has been plotting his assassination. And the court heard how the United States, under the previous administration, which may be the next administration, had plotted to assassinate him who had plotted to poison him, who had plotted to kidnap him, who had plotted to uh, rendition him. Shame! Shame. 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 Shame on those who put pr journalists in prison. Shame on those who murder journalists. Shame on those who are afraid of the truth. That's not a society I want to live in. We're better than that. The UK courts are also under scrutiny. They have heard about the murder plots against my husband. They are on notice that the country that is trying to extradite him has planned to murder him. They don't deny it. They just change the subject. The whole time we were in court, the other side somehow avoided to talk about what the what the documents Julian published revealed. They didn't talk about the war crimes. They didn't talk about the 15,000 civilian killings in Iraq that were revealed. They didn't talk about their torture and rendition pro program. They didn't talk about uh, Guantanamo Bay. They simply changed the subject. Shame. Shame. This case is brought by criminals who want to maintain their impunity, who want to avoid the courts. They are the fugitives from justice, we not Julian. Justice. Julian is justice. He is transparency. Yeah. He is us. He is the public. And as long as Julian remains in prison, we are all in prison. And they are free. It cannot be. Free Assange. Free Assange. Free Assange. Be there for Julian. He would be there for you. He is there for you. He needs to be free. Free Assange. Freedom of journalists in 
journalism around the world. Julian must be free. Lee Assange. Lee Assange. Lee Assange now. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for demonstrating for the last two days. You've been outside that court for two days. You've done absolutely brilliantly. And nothing that we say from this platform is as important as you being there. Every speaker on this platform is simply a mirror for the protesters and the demonstrators and the activists who are fighting to free Julian Assange. So stay strong and stay mobilised and stay fighting. And remember, one of the slogans, one of the oldest slogans in the business of popular mobilisation is educate, agitate, mobilise. Take that home with you, continue to do it, stay safe, stay fighting, stay